Welcome to the Mystery Lake. Over the last year, this water has been home to my most challenging campaign yet. It's been a season of fishing that has tested not only my angling ability, but also my patience. In this video, I'll share with you the whole story, and by the end, I'm sure you'll see why I will remember this lake for the rest of my life. I actually kept a diary during this campaign. Now, normally I'd just take a load of photos and of course make the video, but something about this location drew me to put it all in writing. So let's go back to the start on March the 4th. Today I drove north to meet someone I've been speaking to for a while on Instagram. His name is Zav and he'd invited me to fish a lake in his garden. This is unreal. I met Zav and he seemed like a nice guy. He lives in a very impressive house, backing onto an even more impressive lake. I'm not totally sure if there's any carp in the lake, but it looks like it could hold monsters. The research I've done showed up absolutely nothing, but I've got a good feeling about this place. Before exploring the rest of the lake, I thought I'd fish for the pike off the jetty in his garden. What? What just happened? My lure was sinking. The pike fishing seemed to be quite good, but as I stood and looked out across the water, I wondered if there are any giant carp lurking. That good, yeah? yeah we took Zav's boat out to explore the rest of the lake. That good, bro? Yeah, see the Nice. Ciao. If we don't ever see you again. <laughs> as we drove around, I used a rod with a lead on the end to get a rough idea of the lake's depths. Nine. Yeah. We've got nine foot between the big... Nine opposite the bead. Yeah. I drew a simple map in my notebook so I can record the water's depths and features that we discovered. Nine. Yeah. I quite like the shallow end by the overflow. I think the cart would like it there, especially later on in spring. In summary, the lake is rather large. Seems to be a very old body of water as there's a lot of silt on the bottom and the depths go pretty deep, over 25 foot in places. Along one side, there's a load of massive houses with very poor access. I can't exactly go walking into other people's gardens. And on the opposite side, there's a golf course. Do you mind just getting a shot of me watching the water? Do I need to press anything? No, it's, 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 all, it's recording already. Yeah? Yeah, no. Oh, it's exciting. First time on a venue is always such a buzz. Like the, this is the first time I've ever seen this place. Uh, Zav has obviously lived here for a while. He, know, he knows it reasonably well, well, but what he doesn't know, and what I don't really know either, is how big the carp get. And I'm hoping this season we find out. Session number one. On my first session, I completely forgot the length of the drive. I'd hoped to be fishing by maybe 3 or 4 p.m., but instead I was just setting up as the light faded away. Of course, there was little time to watch for fish. I also didn't want to be boating my tackle around the lake in the dark, so I set up in the garden and got to work sorting out the rods. Well, the rods are out for the first time on the Mystery Lake. What? this season has in store for me. Right now, I have no idea. It could be the best season I've ever had. It could be the worst campaign I've ever done. Bring it on. I would so love it if this place is just gold mine of big carp, but we will see. The next morning I woke early and sat on the jetty, watching for shows. Dawn is an excellent time to spot carp crashing, but on this occasion, I saw nothing. As the sun began rising properly, I had a take. I 
noticed the lead had definitely moved, but upon picking up the rod, I reeled down into a snag. Just in case there is a fish on the We had to use the boat to free the hook, but the fish was nowhere to be seen. I decided to walk around the lake a fair bit that day. It is a huge place and I wanted to get to know it better. Not a bad place to watch the water from. I didn't spot any signs of fish and it was becoming clear that this was a low stock lake. The reeds in the swim had grown up a lot, which could cause us problems if trying to land a fish. I cleared them out before getting the rods positioned. Um, this should be fine. Oh, oh wow. I'm oh good. my god. <laughs> <laughs> There's quite a lot of uh, seeds in the air. During the second day of my session, I positioned the rods properly, paying attention to the lake bed and dropping rigs near a load of reeds in approximately 10 foot of water. Fishing at a distance of over 200 yards, I chose to use braid on my reels. Normal fishing line would stretch way too much and bite indication would be very poor. That evening, a few of the neighbors were out in boats and paddleboard things. The air was fairly warm and I felt confident of a bite. We were feeling hungry now, so decided to light the barbecue. I love you do it on your lap, I swear that's not, <laughs> that's not how it's supposed to work. <laughs> One thing I've learned about Zav is that he doesn't go easy with the food. If he's cooking, then we're eating like kings. He looked at me and said, it's bulking season now, Carl. I couldn't blame him, to be honest, as I'm skinny as a rake and normally just eat pot noodle on the bank, but not at the Mystery Lake. In the morning, we realised the harsh reality of carp fishing. You regularly have to pack up having caught nothing. Before leaving, though, I suggested that we begin pre-baiting a spot, the aim being to draw in the shoals of bream and roach with the hope that carp would follow. We chose a comfortable distance where the lake bed was clean and sandy and used the boat to deposit a few kilos of particle in a relatively wide spread. A few weeks later, I packed the van again, this time bringing more bait so that Zav could keep feeding the spot in between sessions. So many rods. I've got to make sure that I get rods for me, but also for Zav, because I'm doing this campaign with him. I took a load of maize, hemp and tiger nuts and after boiling them, split the bait into separate freezer bags. This would make it easier for him to defrost a bag every couple of days and bait up the area. Oh, come on. There's fish to catch. And the weather's looking nice. And I wanted to get the rods out a bit earlier on this session so I could watch the water in the evening and really, you know, learn the lake a little bit. Typical. The drive to the lake ended up taking five and a half hours due to bad traffic. It was far from enjoyable, but the miles needed to be done if I was gonna have any chance at succeeding in this campaign. The sun was shining when I arrived and our excitement was building for what this session could hold. Zav is fairly new to fishing and asked me to put the rods out for him, bang on the spot that we'd baited before. If he was to get a bite, it would be a huge thrill, a chance to battle a big carp for the first time. I just hoped that we hadn't bitten off more than we can chew. This was a huge lake and we'd still not actually seen any signs of carp. Perhaps the lake doesn't even hold carp, I wondered. Then what do I do? The next day I was sitting around, feeling kind of bored. I caught myself wondering if I was wasting my time. That bobbin has just pulled up tight. Out of nowhere, no the alarm burst into life. 
No way. I grabbed the rod and tightened up. Something wasn't right. A pike had swam into my line and somehow bitten hold of it. I couldn't believe it. All this time fishing and my first proper run was a pike with a taste for fishing line. Perhaps this was the reason for the other twitchy bites too. It would explain why each time I got a run, I'd picked it up and reeled into nothing. Once again, it was a long drive home. This was already becoming a frustrating campaign and doubts about the lake holding carp were circling in my mind. I am tired. I'm tired and a little bit concerned because that is another two nights without so much as a bite, not even a bream. At home, I did some more research, poured through forums and Google, but found absolutely nothing. Of course, this is a totally private lake, only fishable by people who own the massive houses along its bank. Even if there were carp at the Mystery Lake, they'd probably never been caught, as no one had tried. Session 3 On the drive up to the lake, I received a call from Ali Hamidi, a relatively famous fisherman in the UK. Hello. Hi, right, Captain. How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm good, thanks. How, how, how are things you? Where are you on the way somewhere? Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm going up to fish uh, a place called. I told him where I was going, and he instantly got excited. Oh, I fished there. He'd fished the lake before and caught a big mirror. Ah, uh, mate, I caught. I'll you a photo. I caught No! I stopped to fuel up the van and before leaving, scrolled back through Ali's Instagram to find the fish. Not only was this evidence of a carp caught from the Mystery Lake, but it was huge and unique in its appearance too. However, it was caught 20 years ago. That fish could be long gone. They certainly don't live forever. I felt more confident and deploying rigs was easier now that I knew the distances and had a better feeling of the swim. Cheers, mate. To mark our baited area so that Zav could pre-bait, we left an H block in the water. This is simply a floating marker tied to some string with a lead on the end. Whilst this worked great for Zav to throw bait around during the week, when I arrived to fish with him, we chose to remove the marker in case a hooked fish was to swim through it and potentially get tangled. Wow. What are you doing, Dad? Oh! Carl! <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> we nearly had a total wipeout then. It's all right, I've got my waves on, I'll sort it out. So. <laughs> bye bye, Rod. Oh my god. I watched the float for a bit that evening, catching a few small roach. Truthfully though, carp were what had brought me all this way, and I was desperate to hook one. Knowing that a carp had been caught from the lake made things so much more exciting. Evening was just beautiful, and I felt lucky to be fishing somewhere so stunning. The next morning we realized we'd blanked again, and began thinking about trying other parts of the lake Six nights of fishing without a carp was getting frustrating. I slept pretty good last night, which of course is bad news. No more fish. Or rather, more would imply that I'd caught some before this, and I haven't. There's no fish, no fish at all. The next evening, we took the boat to the shallow end of the lake, and to our surprise, the lily pads had grown right up. There's got to be fish in these lily Something just moved then. Could have been a pie catch, see. Oh yeah, just come through here. It just swam underneath the boat. What was it? I really want to get a proper sighting of a fish, but I keep seeing like swirls and then thinking, well, was that, um, Carp? Was it a pike? 
We liked this area, but access around here was a little more tricky. We'd either need to bring all of our tackle through the private golf course, or get all our kit in the boat and drive it across the lake. With Zav's garden still not producing bites, I wanted to try somewhere else. I also didn't have my normal tackle as I'd lent it to a friend. I decided to fish a little further up towards the shallows. The depth wasn't too different from before, but the change of scenery gave me hope. Setting up amongst the reeds, I fished with a spread of boilies and flicked three rods out just past the marginal drop-off. This session ended disappointingly too, not even a bream or a line bite. Before I left we took the boat up to the shallows once more. We found a silty area next to the pads in probably 5 foot of water. I baited up with a load of tiger nuts and boilie, ready for our next session. That was it, we were riding off the deep end of the lake and the convenience of the garden swim was going to be ignored from now on. This time round we made the journey to the far end of the lake. Zav walked round and I boated the gear across. I'm heading right up into the shallows for today's session. The lily pads up here are beautiful. I'm hoping I can land here all right. <sighs> Crash landing. Now we're good. This end of the lake may have been more difficult to access and fish, but it was paradise. It was like fishing in a garden. We set up next to the overflow, which joins the lake to the rest of the valley. I wanted to avoid laying line over the pads where possible. Ideally, my line would sink to the bottom to avoid spooking the carp. To get the rigs into position, I needed to wade out before casting and have my bite alarms out in the water. Any other setup would result in my line laying on top of the lilies, which increased the chances of losing or spooking the fish. So far this season, I'd mostly been fishing with boilies and tiger nuts on the sandy lake bed. For this, I'd use fairly standard hair rigs, but now I was fishing a new area, which was very silty with leaves and twigs all across the bottom. For this situation, I decided to switch to pop-up rigs, stiff hinges to be precise. A buoyant bait would hold my hook up and away from debris and would also reset and not tangle when a bream or tench played with the bait. If you walk behind me, then you know how deep it is. Zav helped once again with getting the rods out, throwing bait as accurately as possible around the rigs. Yeah, that's perfect. Like a big handful, a tiny bit further than that. Beautiful. Perfect. You can go back to the land now. <laughs> Whoa, it's so close to the top of your waders. <laughs> oh, I haven't got any bobbins. Whoa, that was big a big wave, wave. man. Right. Big wave. The water couldn't be any deeper, could it? Nope. Or you couldn't be any shorter. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. You got me with that one. I think in carp fishing, the unknown can be the best part, but in some cases also the worst. I I'm excited about what could potentially l live in this lake, but I'm also concerned that there might be nothing. I know of the big mirror, but that photo is from 20 years ago, and it would have been an old fish at the time that it was caught. So whether or not it's even still alive and if that's the only one in here I don't really know we're fishing a new area and it's exciting we're fishing the honey hole it, oh, is that what this bit's called yep. this yeah. is the honey hole this is the honey hole um, fingers crossed tonight is the night 
definitely carp. Yeah, and we we prayed. We have prayed to the carp gods. We we, we worshipped the carp gods. We said all the right lucky lucky words. Yeah, symbols. We made yeah. Everything. We made our sacrifices. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> what did we sacrifice tonight? Oh, I I sacrificed <laughs> my my job, my relationship. <laughs> And, uh, and so far we've been repaid with absolutely nothing. No, we're gonna catch them. Tonight is the night. Tonight is the night. Morning, everybody. I didn't sleep too good because I was so excited. I had my waders laid next to my bed, ready to go. I had the rods out there in the water, perfectly positioned, spots baited, had my bike camera set up to try and record a take. I woke up in the middle of the night to change the battery to keep that recording for when that moment finally happened. And then, yeah, I woke up this morning and had caught nothing. The next two nights slipped by quietly, but on the last day I noticed some bubbles on the edge of the pads. I cast a rig on them, and to my shock, the rod tore off not long after. I've hooked one. I can't even believe I'm saying that. I thought I had my first carp. An eel certainly wasn't what I had in mind, and caused me some struggle whilst trying to unhook and hold it. Oh, crikey! I swear that just bit me. We loaded up the boat and I cruised back down to Zav's garden where I could pack the van and drive home empty-handed once more. Now there is a point where you have to stop and think, am I doing the right thing? I wondered to myself, is the big mirror dead? Are there any other carp in this lake? How many more sessions was I going to do before accepting some level of defeat? In the coming weeks I was due to take on my biggest foreign adventure yet, a two week trip to America. I'll admit, I was quite behind with admin and editing work for my business and I hadn't uploaded to my YouTube channel for a whole month. Now my parents are normally the most encouraging and supportive people but they, and Omi, all suggested that perhaps I was wasting my time and finishing my farm pond campaign was a better idea as at least I knew there was actually carp in that lake. It's funny though because I've been in this situation a number of times before People who love you will sometimes suggest the easier path, the one that leads to comfort and safety. However, your decisions are ultimately up to you. And if you're like me and admitting defeat is just too painful, then you've got to say thanks guys for the advice, but I've got this. Session six. Heading into the shore at our new location. I didn't think the boat was gonna make it. It was, uh, very low on battery and uh, very heavily loaded up. But we're nearly there. All of the wading around on the previous session had made me concerned about actually hooking a carp. It was a little too deep to wade to the edge of the pads and getting into the boat wasn't too easy either. I wanted to fish somewhere which was perhaps a bit clearer with a few less lily pads, but I still wanted to fish towards the area that we'd been baiting. I thought initially we were the only people with permission to fish this lake, but I learnt there were two older fellas who worked for the golf course and also someone else with connections. Further up the bank, the other angler had actually cleared a swim. Obviously, we didn't want to get in their way, and at first I wasn't really sure if the guy was poaching or actually had permission. Zav found out it was actually someone he knew. We got talking and the guy said that we could fish from the area that he had cleared. This was very kind, so big thanks to him. And we have reached dry land. <laughs> Thankfully, I could still boat my rigs to the baited area from this new spot. Using the boat to place rigs is super handy and allowed me to feed accurately over each of them. 
The evening was beautiful once again, but the words of my parents were spinning in my head. Perhaps if I blank this session, I'll call it a day, I thought. That big mirror is probably dead, I said to Zav. Yeah, but it's been replaced now by a massive koi, he replied. I smiled weakly and went to bed. At four in the morning, I had a couple of beeps and the rod tip bent round. Believing it was another bream or tench, I casually recorded myself beginning to reel it in. The fish kicked hard and pulled back a bit. Perhaps this wasn't a bream. Is that a... Yeah. I think it could be a carp. It, it gave a bite like a bream. But it suddenly started waking up. Oh no, that's proper fighting, man. A couple of times it got stuck in the pads, but came free soon after. I think that's a car. The slow wallowing fight was confusing me, and I didn't get particularly excited until the fish was close in. Dad? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god. Come on, come on, come on. Get in that nice and low. <gasps> yeah, left, 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 left. Oh my god. Zav, we've done it. <laughs> I thought it was a brain. Yes! That's actually massive! <gasps> and there it was, laying in the net, a huge, heavily scaled mirror. Oh my god! How big do you, th do you think it is? Upper 20s. Upper 20s, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Upper 20s. It was quite heavy when I was lifting it out of the water. Can you use their muscles, Carl. What muscles? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're joking. No way. <laughs> it's not a 20. 15. Well, 15? <laughs> you have a laugh, mate. <laughs> 35. Oh my. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's 35 pounds, no joke. Oh. It's good that we've got the baby ones out of the way early and now we can start catching some big fish after this, can't we? Sorry, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I sat back down on my bed, trying to regain composure. Looking on my phone and comparing the blurry map shots, I realised it was the same fish as the one in the photo. I'd landed the big mirror 20 years later. I called my friend Cal who could come down and help with photos and at first light I recast the rods. Oh my god, we got a carp! We got a carp. Zab, can you hold the rod? Yes! Keep, keep the rod at, keep the rod at high. Is it? Big carp, big carp. Big carp. Well, there's a big carp in there. Oh yeah, the net's in the boat, right. I'm recording on this. Oh, you got a bit wet there. Keep any lily pads around the line, just yank the lily pads up. There we go. Oh, my eyes are watering. Please still be on. Please. I don't know if it's still there or not. Oh, it's come off. I think it's come off. I can't believe that got off.
I hate, I just hate losing fish because you just, I don't, we didn't get, even get to see it. Oh, oh dear, oh dear. Oh, They're no way. So well. What do we have here? <laughs> oh, cheers, man. It's all right. Cal has come down to help with some pictures. He's also brought me some goodies because he's a legend. And uh, yeah, we're just heading down to the swim now to take a look at my prize. Part of me is like, oh, that's it now. Caught the big one. Caught the one that I wanted. But then part of me is like, what else lives in here? What did I just lose? Yeah. You know, how big was the fish that just came off just now, man? Oh, wow. <laughs> I can't stop smiling. This is what I was waiting for. This is what I was dreaming of. <laughs> the Mystery Lake campaign came good an absolutely incredible old mirror. We reckon that this fish is probably 45 years old, definitely over 40. So it's an ancient creature and it's made this whole campaign worthwhile. Here's Av, get in the picture. There we go, man. Team effort. Oh, absolute beast. <laughs> oh, wow. What a moment. <laughs> we did it, buddy. <laughs> Despite my elation at the landed carp, I couldn't stop thinking about the fish I'd lost. I'd also promised Zav the next bite would be his, so of course, it didn't take long for us to return. Zav got his chance to battle a big carp, and the lake has continued to surprise us. <laughs> be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel as I'm sure there will be more chapters to this story coming soon.